Hello folks, in this video we're going to look at how to take text input from the player in Pygame. There are a few different ways that we can achieve this. You could use the key down event and check for specific keys being pressed, but this detects every key, including the function and command keys, so you would have to filter those out. You could use the get pressed method, but Pygame's own documentation warns against using this for input. And that brings us on to the text input event. This event is similar to key down, but it filters out all the function keys and is the preferred approach for this. I've got the starter code typed out already here, which creates the game window, defines some colors, and then has my main event handler with a quit event. I'll link this code in the video description so that you can just copy it across. The first thing I will do is add that text input event in. We go into the existing event handler, and the first check I'm going to do is I'll add a comment to say handle text input, and then I'll look for that event type. And the event type is pygame.textInput. If that event does trigger, well, let's just print the event out and see what it looks like. If I run this code now and I start pressing keys on the keyboard, you're going to see them popping up down the bottom. And this text variable here displays the key that I've pressed. If I press Control, Shift, or Caps Lock, for example, none of these are registered down here. And that's the benefit of using the text input event rather than the key down event. This already filters out all those additional keys. You'll have noticed that the attribute is coming up as text, which means that we can access this by simply adding dot text at the end. If I run this again, I'm pressing the same keys, but now rather than the full information of the event, it's just printing out the key that I'm pressing, including numbers. The next step is to add a string that we can store this text inside of. I'll go back up here just above the game loop and we're going to paste in this little bit of code. So I define a text string which starts off just empty. Now I can tweak my event handler a little bit. So what I'd like to do is update that text string by adding event.text to it. So whatever key I just press, it gets appended to the end of this string. Now rather than printing the event, I just print that text string. Run this again and as I type it, you can see that it's filling up an actual word. Now this has given us functional text input, however the text is being displayed down here rather than on the game screen. To display this on the screen, I'm going to use a helper function, which I will paste in here. Now this function takes a few arguments, it will take the text, the font, the text color, and then the x and y coordinates. It then outputs that onto the screen for me. I covered this function in a separate tutorial on drawing text, so if you're not familiar with this or you need a refresher, I'll link it up above. The next thing I need to do is define a font for this to use. And I'm going to paste that in up here. I'm going to use the future of font and I'm going to define a font size variable set to 60 pixels. Then I can go into the game loop and just down here I can call that function. So now rather than using the print statement I'm going to be using the draw text function to display that on the screen which then means that I can remove this print function from here. If we run this code again and I start typing you can now see it's coming up on the screen. This code gets us 90% of the way there. You can now type and it will come up on the screen. It will automatically detect capital letters and even the spacebar works. Now let's add some improvements to make it more functional. One thing that doesn't work right now is the backspace. So although we can type text, we can't actually delete it. Well, the backspace key isn't picked up by text input. So we have to handle that separately using key down. We paste that in just under here and then update the indentation. Now this is going to check for a key down event and then the type of event is going to be the backspace key. If that happens, I simply use string splicing here to remove the last character from the string. Let's run this again. Whoops, there you go. I can delete it and go back again. At this point, the text functionality is good enough to be used as is, but we can improve this further and add multi-line text. Adding multi-line text input only requires a few small tweaks. Since each line will be a separate string, we will need a way of storing these strings together and also being able to track them as we delete the text using the backspace key. This will be achieved using a list, which will contain the strings. The first tweak that I need to make to the code is change this definition here. Rather than defining an individual empty string, I now define a list which contains the empty string inside it. I then need to update how I'm displaying this on the screen. So this function here needs to change a little bit to instead use a for loop. What happens here is that we're iterating through the text list which has given us each individual line. We then pass that line into the draw text function just exactly the same way as before. However, each line is going to be drawn after the other, which means that I need to space them out correctly on the Y coordinate. That is why I'm using this additional variable here, which is row, and it's working together with enumerate. If you're not familiar with the enumerate, basically what's happening here is that each time I iterate through this text list, it just counts. So it adds one every time. 
So I can use this row variable as a counter. That way, as we go through each of those rows, I can multiply that by that font size variable from before and add it to my Y coordinate. So this way, each row is drawn beneath the other. Next, I need to update the text input stage. Now, previously, I was working with an individual string, so I was able to simply add text to the end of it. But now I'm working with a list of strings. What I need to do is take the very last value within that list, and that can be accessed at index minus one. This means that any text that I type gets added to the last sentence in the list. I have to apply the same onto the backspace key. So now it's not just the individual string, it's actually the last index value within the list. And I do the same here. The logic stays exactly as it was before but now I'm working with a list rather than an individual string. And finally, I need to add a check for the return key, which will add an extra row to my list. We'll add this here within the event handler by saying elif event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore return. And if that's the case, then we take our text list and we append another empty string to the end of it. If I run this again, I should now be able to type on multiple lines. This is almost complete, however, if I try to delete all of this, you notice that I'm only able to delete the last line. I can't actually move to the line before. So there's a couple of final tweaks we need to make here. Within this backspace check, this first line stays the same. We then check the length of that line, because if it's only got zero characters in it, then that means that that line is finished. If that is the case, then we check the length of the entire list. If there is more than one line, then it means we can move up to the previous line. And we do that using list splicing. Now if I run this code again, and I type a couple of sentences. If I go back and delete them, I now move back to the previous line. And that's how you add multi-line text input within Pygame. If you guys found this useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.